OK, well, we're about a few minutes away from maybe five minutes away. I wonder whether we can just see what the scene is like inside local government uh, headquarters where we're waiting for that uh, result to be announced. I think that's there. The, there you see uh, the picture uh, there now. Uh, quite a gathering of the good and the great uh, that I can see before me. Also, huge numbers of journalists uh, are packed in there as well. A little ripple of applause. Uh, there's Charles Kennedy uh, go, going in and he's... Uh, being greeted there. James Landale, our chief political correspondent, is there as well. Uh, James, is everybody uh, lined up? Is everyone there? Yeah, that, that's right. Everybody said Charles uh, Kennedy has just arrived to applause for MPs and journalists who are here. Well, at least I don't think many of the journalists were clapping. Uh, and uh, all the candidates are in the building. The expectation is now here that Ming Campbell has certainly won this contest. Uh, the key question now is what is the scale of his victory? There are two rumours doing the round here. One is that the margin has been quite narrow, just a margin of 3% over Chris Hoon. Other figures doing the rounds also are that Ming Campbell got 57% of the 57% uh, of the vote in the final analysis, um, and uh, that Chris Hume got 43%. So we know for definite that Sir Ming Campbell has won this contest. We'll hear the results fairly shortly uh, when the former party president Navnit Delakia, Lord Delakia. Uh, comes onto the stage uh, with the three contenders uh, and announces the results. But that is the expectation now. Uh, Samingas Campbell has won this contest. He was the front runner at the start of the contest. He then uh, fell okay, behind James, after James. a vigorous and energetic and effective campaign by Chris Hune. Well, here they come. Here comes Chris Hune, uh, Ming, followed by Ming Campbell, uh, followed by Simon Hughes, walking along the corridor of the local government association offices in uh, Smitska there in Westminster. Uh, pretty inscrutable looks on their faces as they uh, walk along the corridor looking uh, serious, sober, professional and they walk into the room any moment now and you'll see all the flashbulbs popping. Yes, there they go. And in will come the uh, three candidates to take their place and await the declaration uh, of the result. Now, uh, Jane, presumably there is I mean, you're saying pretty confidently that it is Ming Campbell. They will have been told in advance. They will indeed. Let's listen to Lord Delakia. May I first of all introduce myself? My name is Navni Delakia, the immediate past president of the Liberal Democrats. Before I invite my colleagues, just two announcements. First, those of you who got mobile phones, please switch them off while the election results are being announced. And second, tea and biscuits will be available <laughs> <laughs> at the end of it. May I, at this stage, invite the three candidates to join me on the platform? I, Navni Dalakya, an immediate past president of the Liberal Democrats, have been asked to declare the result for the election of the new leader of the Liberal Democrats. The turnout in the election was 72 percent. 52,036 valid ballot papers were returned. On the first round of counting, the total number of first preference was ca votes cast for the candidates was as follows. Ingis Campbell, 23,264. Simon Hughes, 12,081. And Chris Hune, 16,691. No candidate obtained 50% of the vote on first preferences. At this stage, the second preferences of Simon Hughes's votes were transferred. So the total votes then counted for the remaining candidates were as follows. Mengis Campbell, 29,697. Chris Hune, 21,628. And I hereby declare that Mengis Campbell has been elected as the new leader of the Liberal Democrats.
Well, there you see the three men uh, posing together for the cameras. A decisive victory in the end for Mingus Campbell, the most senior uh, parlamentarian in the Liberal Democrats, uh, the veteran foreign affairs spokesman who was seen as the steady as she goes candidate, his arms held aloft. The former Olympic athlete uh, crosses the finishing line uh, in first place. A comfortable victory, 29,697 in the final playoff with Chris Hume coming second with 21,628 votes. Earlier, Simon Hughes had been eliminated, having received 12,000 votes. And then, uh, in this whole prisoners of second preferences, it looks like they split pretty much evenly for uh, Simon Hughes, uh, for, for Chris Hume and Mingus Campbell. But Mingus Campbell will now lead the Liberal Democrat Party. And they're... Right. Uh, we see, I, now, I think, the champagne like being write. uncorked in Fife, his uh, constituency in Scotland. Let's listen in now to uh, whether Ming Campbell is going to say a few and words. New leader, Ming Campbell. <laughs> Ming, Chris Navnit, Chris Renard and all of my team, thank you very much indeed. A truly Olympic victory, if I may say so. <laughs> um, one other thing is obviously clear, which is that the party decided that having had to have one new leadership election this year, it didn't want a second all-member ballot to have a new presidential election. I understand. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> this has been a really good leadership election campaign, and I want... Firstly, I want firstly to pay tribute to you for all the time that you have been in the party. You have been an absolutely clear, uh, unqualified, principled voice for liberal democracy. You've been respected at home and abroad. I have no doubt at all that under your leadership we will be a clear, united and successful party. And I'm sure you know, but I say it publicly, that you have my complete and unqualified support, as I know you will do for the whole party. Can I also say... Can I also say to friends here and to the press, everybody need have no doubt liberal democracy will be completely safe in your hands. To Chris, thank you for a very strong, a very effective and a very important campaign. The one thing that I specifically want to pay tribute to is the fact that you made it as clear as anybody can that unless we have a sustainable environmental future, we are not serving this generation or any generation as they'd expect us to do. And thank you very much, Chris, for that. <laughs> what unites all three of us, Navinit, is that as we went around the country in Scotland, in England and Wales, the party was in really excellent heart. The party was enthusiastic. Party members came in great numbers to the meetings. You've seen the turnout much higher than the British general election turnout. And the party is very confident. And so it should be. Charles, we had a brilliant uh, pair of elections under your leadership, and I pay warm and great tribute to you for doing this. Act. <laughs> you've given us... You've given us... You've given us... You've given us a phenomenal start. But we haven't stopped now. The by-election in Cheadle, the by-election the other day in Dunfermline and West Fife, and the local elections show that people are coming to us all the time in greater numbers from the Labour Party, from the Tory Party and from the Nationalists. I am absolutely clear, absolutely clear, that this party has a great future. I'm absolutely clear that liberal democracy has a great future. And I'm absolutely clear that we will go, Ming, under your leadership from strength to strength towards the government that Britain desperately needs and that we are all so unitedly determined to achieve. Thank you all very much yeah. indeed.
Well, thank you, Simon. Thank you for those warm words as well. Um, I think it's very clear from this contest that there is far more that unites all three of us than conceivably divides us. But I want to say, first of all, many congratulations to Ming. I think that he knows that he will have my full support in the challenges ahead. And I know that the cause about which we both care passionately is in very good hands. This party needed a real contest, and that's exactly what we've had. The result means very clearly that Ming has a hard-won and decisive mandate to lead this party to new advances with the backing of all of us. It's been a thoughtful and a good-tempered contest, for which I thank both Ming and Simon, in which it's clear that we are the most united party in British politics around key issues that matter to this country. The sustainability of our planet, the fairness of our society, our civil liberties, the need to decentralize decisions in what is an incredibly over-centralized state, and internationalism, the international rule of law, not war. I also believe firmly that the party was always going to make the right decision taking into account the particular mix of talents, experience and qualities on offer in this contest. Collective wisdom is often so much greater than individual wisdom and Ming has undoubted authority, experience and credibility. And I reiterate that I look forward to being a part of his team taking us to greater success. Let me just thank Chris Renard as the returning officer and his team for an immaculately conducted contest. Let me thank my own supporters for their extraordinary verve and enthusiasm and those party members who supported a rank outsider in what has been an exhilarating and exciting campaign. Finally, let me say that I am more convinced than ever after this leadership contest that the best days of this party are still to come, that we are poised for a further substantial advance that will take Liberal Democrat principles into power. All good luck. To our new leader, Ming, many congratulations again. Over now to the new leader of the Liberal Democrats, Ming Campbell. <laughs> well, as is customary on these occasions, let me begin by thanking the returning officer and his staff and all those who have been responsible uh, for counting the votes. Uh, I don't think we've got to thank the police on this occasion. I don't think it was necessary for them to take uh, any part in these events. I also want to thank everyone who took part in this election. 72%, up 10% on the last occasion when the party chose its leader. A clear indication and demonstration of the fact that the party is fully engaged. Of course, I want to thank those who have supported me, those who voted for me, but I must also thank my campaign team, who have run a most spectacularly professional campaign right from the very beginning. And the challenge, as has already been said, is for all of us now to lead this party back towards government at the next general election. And today is a victory, not for me, but it's a victory for all Liberal Democrats. Because in the last few weeks, we have once again confounded our critics and our commentators, many of whom wrote us off. And yet, in Dunfermline and West Fife, thousands of people elected Willie Rennie as the 63rd Liberal Democrat MP. A remarkable victory. A remarkable victory in Labour's heartlands and at the back door of the Chancellor of the Exchequer. A victory, too, which burst the bubble of Mr Cameron's Conservatives. A victory that points the way now to a contest between those twin forces of Conservatism, uh, Labour and Conservative. A victory, too, which underlined the remarkable legacy we have from Charles Kennedy. The party will forever be in his debt. Now let me say a few words uh, to both Simon and Chris. 
Mr. Simon, we are very old political friends. And I've never ceased to admire your tireless efforts and enthusiasm to promote the cause of liberal democracy, the length and breadth of the country. I look forward to continuing that work together with you as a valued friend and as an effective campaigning president of our party. So, Chris, let me say, I always knew you were a formidable asset for our party, but you have demonstrated the strength of that in the course of this election campaign. You will be a substantial part of the future of our party, and I look forward to working with you, yes, and the others of the brightest and best generation in British politics who have come to join the parliamentary party of the Liberal Democrats to allow us both to develop and to strengthen. But let me tell you now how I intend to lead the Liberal Democrats. I'm going to modernise our party so as to make a reality of three-party politics in Britain. I'm going to ensure that it's the Liberal Democrats who are the party of ideas and innovation in Britain. And I'm going to encourage the brightest and the best from every walk of life and from every part of the country, women and men, of every creed, of every background, of every religion, to come and join our party. I'm going to lead the party in a crusade against poverty, the poverty of income and the poverty of aspiration. For fairness and freedom are the inalienable right of every citizen of this country. I'm going to ensure that the party champions environmental protection. We have a duty to pass on a world fit for our children and grandchildren. I'm going to make the Liberal Democrats the party of democratic revolution, combating the unelected Quango state, the unaccountable power of central government, and the secrecy which still pervades far too much of Britain. I'm going to make the Liberal Democrats the party which looks beyond our shores, which recognises that prosperity and security and sustainability are all dependent on effective international action. And I'm going to make the Liberal Democrats the party which pledges to take power from Westminster and Whitehall and give it back to men and women in their own communities so that they can determine how their schools, hospitals, police and transport are to be run. Leadership will mean tough questions and hard answers as we seek to embrace the opportunities created by a new political landscape. But let me make it clear now, caution and consolidation will not do. Safe pair of hands, yes, but ready to take risks, ready to challenge orthodoxy, yes, and ready to challenge the party too. The prizes can be the most enticing for liberals and progressives in decades in this country. We have the brightest political generation in our ranks. Who would not relish the chance to lead in those circumstances, and who would not relish the chance to take on both Labour and the Conservatives? Our task now is this, to build a strong, effective, powerful Liberal Democrat Party with the objective of ensuring a greener, fairer, decentralised and democratic Britain, a Britain at peace with itself at home and admired abroad. That task begins now. <clears throat> Applause there for Mingus Campbell as he makes his acceptance speech as the new leader of the Liberal Democrats and uh, join on the platform uh, with his wife, uh, offering commiserations to the unsuccessful candidates. Ming Campbell, they're saying, I'm going to lead this party back towards government. He said there were tough questions and hard answers ahead. He said, yes, I'm a safe pair of hands, but I'm ready to take risks as well, trying to discount the image as if he was some kind of here just in a holding pattern until the next generation's leader is nominated. And he promised a crusade against poverty, poverty of income and the poverty of aspiration. Well, let's just have a look at the results of how he won this contest. 
After Simon Hughes was eliminated, his votes were redistributed and it came to a straight playoff. Min Campbell got 29,697 of the votes, Chris Hume 21,628. People had predicted it would be very, very close indeed. In the end, it was a decisive victory for Mingus Campbell, the most senior of the Liberal Democrat MPs. The popular and well-respected MP for Fife has done it. And this is how the result was announced just a few moments ago. 1,628. And I hereby declare that Mingus Campbell has been elected as the new leader of the Liberal Democrats. The moment when the flashbulbs popped the Ming Campbell had achieved what has been a long-standing dream to lead his party at 64 years old. Well, let's talk now to our chief political correspondent, James Landell, who's there at the local government association where the result was declared and where we saw the three contenders waving enthusiastically. James, what do you think the significance of this result is? Well, uh, the significance, overwhelmingly, is the fact that this was a decisive... It was not as close as had been anticipated. Uh, if my mathematics is correct, uh, Mingus Campbell had a majority over Chris Hune in the final vote of over 8,000 votes, which is pretty much what the same majority that Charles Kennedy had all those years ago, back in 19, 1999, when he defeated uh, Simon Hughes. By my, my calculation, that is a majority of around 15% thereabouts. And that means there will be no doubts here. So Mingus Campbell is the decisive leader of this party, which means that he will be given a fairly overwhelming mandate now to do pretty much what he wanted to do. The crucial question is this. He said in his speech just then, uh, caution and consolidation. Uh, it will not do. I mean, that is one of the things that everybody had expected of him, that he would simply be the candidate uh, of who would be the safe pair of hands, if you like. He said, yes, safe pair of hands, OK. But he said he would challenge not only the orthodoxies uh, of his party, but he would challenge the party itself. Now, the key question here is very much what happens now. Who does he... Uh, let me just... Yes, come, Chris Hume could come through. It's all chaos here. One, the defeated candidate just passing through in front of the camera here. It's a very tight, small room here at the Local Government Association where uh, the Liberal Democrats actually ran their election campaign uh, for the general election this time last year. The crucial point is, is what does Mean Campbell do now? How far does he push his party? How much does he say, right, this is where the party needs to go, this is what it needs to do? Or, on, or does he, is he cautious about that or does he really go for it? Does he really challenge his party? Because at the moment it is a bruised party that is uncertain about its future. It doesn't know quite which direction it's heading at the moment. But certainly the party membership as a whole have said, OK, for the moment we want somebody who's a little bit cautious. Uh, and, uh, but let's see what happens. Now, I'm very glad to be joined by the, uh, the winning candidate, Samir Campbell. Congratulations. Um, let me be very clear. You're live on News 24. Um, You've won this contest. What are you going to do now? Well, the first thing to do is to re-establish the Shadow Cabinet. Uh, that's very important. I want to blend youth and experience. I made a point in my acceptance speech a moment or two ago about saying how much talent we have. My task now as the leader is to make sure that talent gets every opportunity to flourish. We're in a changed set of political circumstances. I believe we have the best young MPs of their generation. I shall make sure that they make the impact they deserve. You say you want to modernise the party. What does that mean? It means being efficient. It means being consistent. It means uh, putting clarity ahead of unity. It means being thoroughly professional in everything we do, so that no commentator, even one as distinguished as yourself, is ever able to say, well, that sounded a bit amateurish. We've got to be absolutely central now to the political system here. Genuine three-party politics. We will only be part of a three-party political system if we're able to demonstrate via professionalism, by our ability that we deserve to be so. You say you want to bring on the new generation. Are you a caretaker leader until after the next election? I'm going to lead the party through this parliament, through the next general election and beyond. And of course, as soon as the general election is over, by our constitution, the leader has to offer himself or herself for re-election. I propose to do that. When you say consolidation of caution is not enough, isn't, wasn't that part of your pitch in this contest? I use Simply those, no, I use those words all the time. The trouble is, if I may respectfully say so, quite a lot of commentators are a bit London-based and they didn't follow us around on the hustings. I was making this point. We're all modernisers. I mean, the great 1906 Liberal government was a, was a modernising government. 
Beveridge was a modernising Liberal. Our party's got to be a modernising party. As I said, we've got to challenge orthodoxy. Yes, and if necessary, I'm going to challenge the party itself too. But you say you want to challenge the party. What does that mean? What it means is we've got to be a party of ideas. We've got to be willing to innovate. We've got to think out of the box. As I was saying on some of these hustings occasions, I care more about open minds and open neck shirts. I want the party to be a genuine crucible of ideas, because that is the way in which we will make the progress we deserve. But what bit of the party, what policy, what section of the party will you have to challenge? All of it. All of it. Everything is up. Everything. We've, got a, we've got a policy review taking place. We've got a tax commission going. We have got to be innovative. And we've, there are tough choices to be made. If you take the issue of the environment and the impact that aviation has upon that, that's an issue which boiled up in the course of the last uh, two or three days. That's an issue where there are tough choices to be made. And I want the party to be honest and credible when it puts before the public the solutions we think are the right ones. Many people criticised this contest. They said it just simply didn't capture the imagination of the public. Well, Why was that? Some, listen, there's a higher turnout uh, of votes among the membership, 10% uh, more than the last time when we had a leadership election. It captured the imagination of the membership, and that's the vital first step. Why did you win? I won, I guess, because people thought that my qualities were the qualities best able to take forward the remarkable legacy that Charles Kennedy left us, the best result for 80 years. I reckon they thought I had the energy, they thought I shared their values, and I think they thought my judgment, particularly on issues like Iraq, was something in which they were willing to put their trust. OK, you promised substantial roles for your other two uh, defeated rivals. Um, uh, what jobs are you going to well, get? Well, that's conversation to have with them. Uh, when are you going to do it? Uh, very soon. We're going straight to Harrogate, as you know, for our spring conference. And as soon as I get back from Harrogate, then I shall be starting to put together uh, the new shadow cabinet. Uh, but these are discussions which one doesn't have on News24, one has with the individuals themselves. Last question. How long have you wanted this job? Um, I suppose for quite a long time. I remember someone once saying, uh, I really hope someone should put me in Parliament because I should succeed Davis here. Well, that didn't happen. Listen, what I've wa I wanted to be a Liberal and then a Liberal Democrat MP. I, I wanted to make an impact on foreign affairs. Now I've got the chance, a remarkable chance, to lead the party. Huge political opportunity. I'm very, very honoured. But I'm also conscious of the size of the task. And that's why I want to get down to it as soon as I possibly can. Okay. Mr. Megis Campbell, thank you very much indeed for joining us here live on News 24. Thank you very much indeed. Well, all the, uh, the chaos taking place here at the party headquarters will continue, media interviews and the like. And then at some stage, uh, Min Campbell will move over to the party headquarters, just a short step away from here, where he will address his uh, party members and the party officials who actually work at his campaign. James Landell there, and the first interview uh, with the new leader given to News24 and our chief political correspondent there, James Landell. Thank you very much.